Hi everyone, Alan here, Our History, Your Story. Today we're at Glencoe, a harsh but beautiful place, and a place that I believe has been etched onto the Scottish psyche, and I'll tell you why. This place had been Jacobite country. The followers of the previous king had sought to seek a, his reinstatement, but to no avail. The new king, King William, had decreed an alternate ultimatum for the clan chiefs. They would have to swear an oath of allegiance to him and his wife by the 1st of January 1662. The Jacobites were no longer considered to be a serious military threat at this time. The clan chiefs were informed of this, and there was even a cash incentive to any clan chief who obliged the king. But the Highland chiefs were a stubborn sort, and they often left, left things to the last minute. On the 31st of December, Alistair MacLean MacDonald, the clan chief here at Glencoe, headed off um, to give his allegiance to the king. Now, Alistair MacLean MacDonald, he thought he could give the oath at uh, Fort William. So, you know, it's named after the new king, so why not? But this wasn't true, and the commander there wasn't, um, he didn't have enough authority to accept the oath. So he was sent off to Inverary, which took a further three days. So he was late there, uh, but the governor general there, uh, Colin Campbell, I believe, he was out celebrating Hogmanay. So he lost three days, you know how it is. Um, and basically, it was agreed that he could take the oath, uh, but it was six days late. So Colin Campbell wrote him a letter saying, why it had been late and do you know what i mean it was it was under good faith do you know he'd made a mistake he went to fort william do you know these things happen and you know what the highlanders can be like uh, so he sent that off everyone was basically happy uh, they sent the letter off to edinburgh uh, with his name saying that he'd taken the oath and yeah it was appeared to be all good however when the letter containing the oaths reached edinburgh it was removed by the privy council it's believed that john dalrymple first earl of stair was the main culprit. Now, it's believed that basically the king and the Earl of Stair were basically looking for someone to make an example of. You know, enforce their power in the Highlands, consolidate it, uh, and take out someone that they could. So they were looking for someone to make an example of. The second Argyle Regiment came to Glencoe under the command of Robert Campbell. Now, when they came here, they told Alistair MacLean MacDonald that they were only here, they were actually going to pass through the lands and they were just looking to be housed for a week or two because they were going to go on and collect taxes from other clans. Before the massacre, orders came into the camp for Robert Campbell and in it it said to put to the sword all of those under 70. At dawn on the 13th of February 1692, the massacre took place, killing 38 people and buildings were destroyed, people were put to the sword, as was stated, and generally, in this climate, it's a pretty nice day today, but if you're destroying people's lodgings and shelters, you're basically condemning them to death or great hardship. Not all the officers in the regiments wished to take part in the massacre, and two of them ceremoniously broke their swords, but before this, they'd let word to the, uh, to the McDonald's, um, what was afoot and this allowed a lot of them to escape and that's why it said that out of uh, I think around 200 why well 38 were killed the rest managed to escape or flee now the McDonald's of Glencoe Alistair McLean McDonald and his clan had acted under good faith fair enough they were late uh, signing the oath or declaring the oath um, but generally through no fault of their own he went to the wrong place accident he got letters to say where he'd been and why he was late he went to the governor general of the area he signed it do you know he'd acted in good faith he'd done the best he could and when the soldiers came here him and his clan had offered hospitality they broke bread they spoke they sung they danced they might have done anything now it's questioned or whether or not the commander on entering the camp knew about it beforehand but after being there, after having all that hospitality, and then having to orchestrate a massacre. Now, killing people that have offered you hospitality, it's... Do you know, the Highlands were a lawless place, this is true, but nothing was more important than your words. 
Your word was your bond. If you were a righteous man, a trustworthy man, you had your word, then that's all it kind of stood for. What were you not if you didn't have your word? Now, Robert Campbell, the officer in charge, I think this hit him. And after the massacre, he turned to alcoholism and he died in debt and poverty. People have said that he lamented his actions here at Glencoe. I've asked a couple of people to give their insight on Glencoe. So Owen from the Scottish History Podcast and Julie from the Exploring Scotland YouTube channel. Julie here from Exploring Scotland. I'm currently in Glencoe Village at the monument for the massacre. Despite all Campbells not actually on the government side, the Campbell's name was tarnished. The Campbells were, after all, taking orders as soldiers. It did, however, strengthen the mistrust of Highlanders where the British establishment and the British were concerned. It strengthened the resolve and it increased Jacobite sympathisers for what would eventually be the 45. The Campbell in charge of the massacre knew the McDonald's. He was from the area and they would have known each other and probably traded. I know that intermarried. It would have appeared to have been quite an insult to the traditional Highland hospitality that the British took advantage of this. Even today, in the Clack again, there is a sign that reads, no hawkers, no Campbells. I'm sure Campbells are more than welcome. It harks back to the days when Campbells just wouldn't have been welcome in Glencoe because of the atrocity that had happened. So my perspective of the massacre of Glencoe maybe slightly differs to other people's in that I believe that more blame should be placed on William the Third. I mean, we've all heard the stories of, you know, never trust a Campbell uh, and the sign inside the Clack Inn in, in Glencoe, you know, no hawkers and no Campbells allowed sort of thing. Um, but William the Third, he was the king. Um, and regardless of whether the McDonald's believed in what he believed in or, or not, uh, or whether or not they rose up against him, um, he still should not have ordered the murder of these people. Um, that's not to say, though, that the Campbells should not in any way be held in account for their actions. I mean, of course, you know, they chose to do it. However, the night before as well, on the 12th of February, either before or after the dinner, um, some of the soldiers did try to warn the McDonald's as to what was going to happen the following day. Uh, there's even a quote uh, from a soldier who was being shown some tartan cloth and the quote is uh, that he told this family where this good played mine I would put it on and go and look after my cattle I would put it on my shoulders and I would take my family and my cattle to a safe place so this goes to show that um, some of the Campbells were against what they were about to do um, but regardless um, it has left a, a very serious mark on Scotland and in Scotland's history. So Glencoe and the Glencoe Massacre have definitely left a mark on the Scottish psyche. Do you know, I don't know if it's maybe given us an untrustworthiness or if it's just, do you know what I mean? You're at, you've only got your words. That's all you've got as a man uh, or as any person. You've only got your words and you have to act morally and the government forces here did not act morally. Um, they were given hospitality, and everyone acted in their good faith, and that good faith was betrayed. So anyway, I'd like to thank Owen from the Scottish History Podcast, and I'd like to thank Julie from the YouTube channel Exploring Scotland for their insight. This has been Our History, Your Story. I've been Alan, and this has been the Glencoe Massacre. Please remember to like and subscribe, and uh, check out Owen and Julie's um, podcast and YouTube channel. And that is the Scottish History Podcast and Exploring Scotland on YouTube. See you next time.